Hey guys, how's it going? Been a while since I've done a video, maybe a couple of years. Uh, when two sticks will smile, we had a lot of fun doing videos and stuff. As she grew up and got sidetracked with her friends, uh, pretty much relied on my buddies to do all the video. We've been out there, we've just been letting somebody else do the video. You can check out uh, Medicine Man, I think 4040 on YouTube. Jack's the Bearded Hiker, some great videos and a blog on that. So there's more than that great that makes some uh, that may be his YouTube name I'm sure you can check him out on Hammock Forums too. All those guys make great videos I've done some trips with them. Can't hardly keep up with most of them but uh, hey they let me come along every once in a while. The uh, thing that's going to be different about this has always been about backpacking and ultralight and uh, sea kayaking or river kayak trips but we're getting ready to go to the Boundary Waters and uh, that's a different beast in that it's uh, partially hiking and partially canoeing. You got to uh, walk from one lake to the other, portage. It's something that was new to me uh, it, doing that type of trip. Most of the time we can just pull up on the bank, work out the boat. You can cheat a little bit on weight and uh, it's a different setup. So we're going to not do a lot of miles, but uh, it's going to be about, uh, you know, five, six miles a day and about half a day in camp, so uh, we need to have a few more things for camp. The trip started off with five people, got down to two. Uh, we lost the last one due to the hur Hurricane Irma, MC. Glad you're okay. Sorry you have to deal with all that cleanup. And wish you were here. You planned this trip. We're just following your, uh, your plan. We're scouting it out. I said once in a lifetime, this is probably uh, two times in a lifetime, we're going back whenever you want to go in 2018 or whenever. Uh, thanks for doing the planning and us uh, getting to use that. But we get to the packs. This part, I want to do this video for two reasons. One, I want to record some uh, pictures and scenery and all those good things you get when we get on the water. But I also want to do my gear so that when I come back, I'll be like, this worked, this didn't, and this will be kind of a record for me, and uh, y'all join in. I don't claim to know everything. This is my first trip. Uh, I have a lot of experience canoeing solo whitewater in my younger days, tandem whitewater, uh, lake trips, sea kayaks. Uh, uh, basically, I've been on the water a lot, but not in the boundary water. So, I went to uh, bwca.com, shout out to them. And those uh, just kind of lurked there for a while and uh, learned some things. So I'm taking what looks like good advice from those, taking what I know, putting it all together. One of the things I didn't do this year was get a true portage pack. Uh, that may be on the agenda if we go again. You can rent them uh, at a great price too. And uh, But I am getting old, slow. So I decided to split it up into two medium-sized packs, and we'll go through those packs. And like I said, if you've uh, hiked with, uh, most of the people I hike with are really ultralight uh, backpackers. I mean, some of these guys are, you know, base weight and then they uh, sub 10, some of them, you know, 10, 12 pounds, add food. You get up much over 20 pounds, uh, you're, you're heavy on most of the hikes around. So this is a little different. Total weight on this pack is about 55 pounds, minus my camera that I'm using right now. This bigger pack is granite gear. It's made for bear canister, which I am using on this time for, you know, from the bears. And uh, it stores the food well too. It runs about 35 pounds total. This is a medium miles pack uh, with the whatever. It's not in this pack and it weighs about 20, so about 55 pounds. Uh, the good thing is, is most of the portages are shorter or we can double portage because you got to come back and get the canoe anyway. So let's go through it and see these packs are set up for portage. So uh, I'm trying to eliminate getting out of the canoe, making that a smooth process without a lot of miscellaneous things to get out and mess with so each portage can go smooth. And uh, we'll see what works and what doesn't. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, only the trip will tell at the end we'll recap and see if it worked or if it didn't what I'd change for next year. This is the first pack. This right here is the bow bag from Granite Deer. Gander Mountain is closing and got a great deal on these. But this just has like my glasses. I got some binoculars in here. 
because uh, I think that will help hunt for portages if you're out in the middle of the lake and you're one, it may save some paddle time. Maybe, maybe not. This will be something I'll give you some feedback when we get back and see if it was worth the wait. I did get a pair of uh, Diamondback, Vortex, uh, Vortex Diamondback 8x28. A little bit bigger than what most people go, but I like quality and man, so far these are great. In low light, they are tremendous. So we'll see if these are worth the wait or not. Those 50-50 on it. We'll see after this trip. Everything else in here is just basic stuff. Some sunglasses, my regular glasses, and some uh, sun, sun lotion stick uh, to take care of that. Stuff you'd need right there at the boat. It's not going to be my life jacket. So that would be on the boat going on the pack. This right here is just a pad. If I want to kneel on the canoe, I'll probably, since we're using rental canoes, it's already set up, I'll probably use it as a kneel pad around camp. So it may be loose, it may not, but it'll go right on the front of the pack. So, and the other thing that's probably going to be loose in the boat is my water bottle. I got this bottle mainly because I'll use it for a measuring cup. I'm using a lot of dehydrated food. So the uh, getting the ounces on this, I'm going to use this for water. I'll have another small bottle for like mixed drinks of uh, whether it's a uh, electrolyte drink like Gatorade or Squinchers, what I actually use. Uh, I like uh, some of the uh, pre you know, little tubes of tea too. But I'll use another bottle for that. This will be water, along with my water filter system, and uh, doubles up. So those three things will be loose in the boat, and they'll go on really quick, hopefully, as a plan. We'll see. The uh, top pocket of my pack. I got my first aid kit. Just up here, be out of the way, won't get lost. Uh, per first aid kits are kind of personal, so I'm not going to go through everything on there. A lot of this gear I'm not going to go through right now. I'm just going to say what's in here. And as the trip goes, we'll show them some of the gear that's a little different and things like that. But first aid kit, show that sometime during the trip. These auto packs are hard to beat for this, I think. It's tough, durable. You can still get good, great prices on them. Let's go through the front. Water filter. I'm using the Catadyne Bee Free. Uh, actually, taking two of them or so live. I'll probably keep them in the bottles. We'll go through that. But it's the fastest flowing filter I've found. Plan on keeping one of these uh, collapsible bottles in the canoe and basically just dipping, and uh, I could drink straight out of that or fill that little uh, Nalgene bottle up with water. So, constant water, no need to uh, carry any water. Yeah, years ago when I first started backpacking, I carried all my water. I joined it down. So, trust your filters, the main thing. Using a uh, contractor's bag to keep this stuff dry in here. Let's jump ahead a little bit. Got a uh, rain jacket in here. And this will be like uh, some gloves and a little stocking hat or toboggan hat. Uh, those kind of things. So everything's out here I need uh, to get warm or dry uh, very quickly. So I should be good. I also have my regular glasses. They weren't in the bow bag. They were up there. The reason I'm doing this too. Picture I know we're supposed to have. Just threw some things in the top that were extra. We're going to be at camp a lot. Uh, this is a little different experience. You know, most of the time we're trying to Stay as light as possible and basically we hike into camp, set up, eat some dehydrated meals, enjoy the company, and uh, get, get in the hammocks and get up the next morning and do it again. This is more about the uh, staying out there and experiencing it some camp time. So I got me some gloves because we're going to be sawing a lot of wood and processing a lot of wood. So I just got some leather gloves. Probably don't need those, but you know, we'll see at the end of the trip what comes out for the next trip. I got a uh, it's bulky, but a fleece shirt normally doesn't make the hiking trips because of the bulk, but uh, it'd be a great quick warm up if uh, the mornings or if the uh, weather can change pretty drastically based on the rain and things like that. We're expecting to be 60-40s. It's changing a little bit because the hurricane came through, I think, and changed some of the weather patterns, but this right here is a great little quick fleece. So it could be wet, but I'll shake it dry. That's what I like about it. My uh, cook kit and pot, not show that sometimes on the trip. The uh, 
this is definitely a luxury thing. This has all my tools, flashlights, anything that normally is loose and extra. The, uh, I got cordage in one end, flashlights in one end, got uh, any, anything that my knives are in here. Knives, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I could lose one of those. Staying organized would be a uh, key. I always know where everything's at, coming in. So this is a little heavier than some stuff sacks, but I think it'll be well worth it. That's the reason we're doing this, to see how it back. But it's definitely well organized. And it makes, instead of having lots of little bags in the pack, there's just a few things in the pack. Trail shoes, thanks to uh, F Troop, one of my hiking buddies, bought these a size, half size too small. The, uh, these are going as camp shoes for, they're light, they're, they're got people who had toes, it's comfortable in camp, but the main reason is, for such a lightweight shoe, they have a very solid footbed and aggressive sole. In an emergency, I could hike with these. Oh, I, I could hike with them anyway, but I could wet foot, get in and out of the water, the rocks, and hike, all those things that the uh, BWCA, the Boundary Waters, throws at you. That's not like a normal hiking trail. These would be fine just for normal hiking. I don't use boots anymore for hiking, so I'm used to that. This would be similar to what I normally hike in. I'll explain this later. This is, uh, remind me to come back to that. And this is all my clothes. And not sure, with that uh, fleece shirt there and this, just the clothes are personal. I'm going to get into what it is. But for eight days, that covers me maybe a little too much based on weather. If the weather goes up to where it looks like it's going, to where the nights are high 40s, 50s, and they take one item out of there. But it's pretty close. Uh, I think that's getting close to everything that's in this bag. Perfect hygiene. The smile towels and the camp soap, toothbrush, all that could be over. <laughs> Somebody will appreciate that. So that's what uh, would be in this pack too. So there's 20 pounds worth of pack. We'll take a, I'll be back shortly with the other pack. Okay, so now we'll go through the other pack. This one's about 35 pounds, heck a lot of food. It's eight days worth of food. Uh, this pack was, is a little heavier than what I originally intended. When five of us were going, we were going to buy some of the tools and saws and stoves and stuff around. So with just two of us going, uh, I think we probably got another three or four pounds of stuff because of that. But we're uh, about 35 pounds. We'll go through this. The first thing is this bottle. That's too slow. Great saw. It's a 30 inch one. Uh, I was just as like saw through butter. So uh, great tool. You know on that, I'm thinking that I can wrap. I got some gear ties by Night Eyes. And I think I can wrap those around the uh, forts on the canoe and uh, leave it there for the portages and stuff. We'll see so it's not sticking out, but if not, that's where it'll go. The, uh, since we're going to be processing more wood, debated on whether to take a hatchet or not. This is a cheap one. I was like, ah, I'll use it till I break it and uh, give me a real good one. Yeah, I haven't broke it yet in all my trips. This is always a challenge whether you should take a hatchet or not, the chances of injury used improperly or high. Uh, hopefully we'll take our time, use it properly, but for splitting wood uh, and processing wood quick, it's probably the best choice. I got some ground cloths. This is about six foot by four foot bag. It's huge. It makes a ground cloth. They can do all kinds of stuff, including an emergency go to ground mattress if I wanted it. So, extra trash bag or contractor's bag in case I rip one up or need an extra bag. So, the uh, little seat pad, I don't know about that. We'll see. This is the uh, Granny Gear Pack. Right now, the name of it's uh, eluding me. But I've had it uh, for a while. I usually could pack my hammock stuff in here. And then I like these nice full access pockets along the side. I liked it so much I had Chris Zimmerbill build me a pack based on this. And uh, it's super light uh, and does basically the same thing. So I ended up not using this a lot. So for this trip I was like, 
when I realized I didn't want to pick up the big pack, the two small packs were going to be easier and safer for me. Then uh, I went back to realize this pack was uh, really made for a bear canister, and uh, it's working really well for that. So just happen to have it in the front pocket. I have a cover for it. May or may not need that. That's more for backpacking. And I have my uh, paper maps. I'm using uh, some uh, smartphones, uh, old ones I have that are uh, in the airplane mode that'll last like days. I got a couple extra batteries. I got a Note Note 5 that I think it's a Note 5 that you can interchange the batteries with. It makes the greatest GPS ever and uh, it served me well, but I always have a compass and paper maps. So this is our plan. Uh, and there we're going. Got the everything. We may go through this at some point. But definitely paper maps have to have. Eight days of food almost. Uh, there's a lot of dehydrated packet gourmet. There's a lot in here. I dehydrated a lot of stuff myself. I didn't have time to do it all. Plus a uh, good mixture and variety is good. This was a last minute decision. I hope it was a good one. Uh, bear, bear encounters obviously are everybody's biggest fear, but you know, they're rare. If you go into the Smokies or somewhere where they're habituated to people, you'll end up having more trouble. I've always found, you know, to keep your uh, camp clean. Uh, some of my friends have uh, got a buddy I hike with called Potneck. He's gone to one of the Yursacks. Really, it comes down to keeping the squirrels and coons and stuff like that out of your food is the biggest reason you hang it, because it lets you in on a secret. Uh, bears climb trees, and they're really good at it. It just slows them up a little bit with the ropes most of the time. And I noticed that there was a lot of uh, pine stop, pine trees, things like that, conifers trees in uh, BW. I just, it could be hard to find a limb, the right kind of limb to hang this much weight on. So I do have a little extra food in one of the side pockets. We'll get to that in a minute. But this is, I like the fact that it holds it, so keep the small animals out. And if we do encounter a bear, it uh, will be a good experience, right, for the most part. The, uh, I probably have a bigger chance of having a car wreck on the way up here than meeting a bear. This is all my sleeping. This is everything I need to sleep in besides the tarp. So that has a hammock and sock, the under quilt, top quilt, everything. When I first started hiking, my sleeping bag was that big. So we've come a little ways with that. On my uh, and you know what? The bad thing is, is this is still a little big and heavy for some of my buddies. They just really got it down pat. Uh, so that all goes in the center part of this pack. Then we, uh, I have to have a lot of food on the ready. So my food bulk is a little higher than it used to be because I need to have some ready to eat food and with the mixture of dehydrated food. I, I, when I need it, I need it quick. So that's what uh, a little extra ball there's first couple of days of snacks that uh, you know I'm sure I've got plenty of food. <laughs> this pack is uh, it has like my forks, spoon type things, my anything's a little extra. Uh, my coffee's in here, the uh, my first night's meal since I'll eat it before I need to worry about bears or any of that small animals. And I'll end up probably hanging this pack and this this little bit right here. But man, that's a lot going to be a lot easier to find a limb to handle that. And the limb that can handle that, or probably a bear can't get out on it, kind of thing. So I think it's a good plan. Hey, if I end up not having food because a bear rolls my canister off or gets all my food, that definitely be a learning experience. In this pocket, it has. Some luxury items, not the tarp. Usually I don't take Cuban tarps on uh, water trips, but I am backpacking. It just had to be a good one to match up. So my Cuban tarp, it is out of the 0.75 instead of 0.51, so it's a little heavy duty. I'm going to sidetrack a second, Cuban tarps. People are like, well, why would you take a Cuban tarp? It's fragile. you got to have a heavy duty tarp. 
That tarp right there, I can repair with duct tape. Try that when they're still in my line. You gotta have tear aid or something. We gotta duct tape anyway in case we have boat issues or whatever. But uh, hopefully it's a good choice. With the sock I got, I'm fully protected. Last minute change was to take a canister soap, so there's gonna be a little more rain. Originally, we we're gonna take a Kelly kettle because we have five people. You can boil 40 ounces of water uh, with sticks off the ground. But the bulk and stuff for two people in the days, I think canister with the rain and stuff, it'd just be easier to cook under the tarp or something. So that was the last minute thing there. Chain, so hopefully that was a good one. I think that's it. Oh, we got something else in here. Yeah, I wasn't going to tell you this. This is my one luxury item. I think it's two pounds or something, or maybe a little more. It's my uh, REI Flex Light chair. I said I was getting old and slow, so. I hope that this is work is worth carrying. So it never makes a hiking trip. So we'll find out. Now we're done. That's it. So 50 pounds, 50, well, 55 pounds. I don't want to cheat it. That's 55 pounds of gear. I don't think uh, we're over it in it. Maybe the chair could come out of there. I could save a few ounces and stuff for pounds. I, you know, if I really had to, I could probably cut out five plus pounds off of that and still survive. Food, at the end of the day, I may have a little much. It's a lot more than I've seen some. My buddy MC that uh, planned this trip that couldn't go because of the hurricane, he lived in uh, South Florida, so obviously first things first, take care of family, and uh, this is the main thing. He, his pack was about a little over 40 pounds. He may have another small pack, but man, he does a great job. And he, he does the right, uh, he plans it out and uh, if I could ever get as good as he is on planning out those kind of trips and the meals and stuff, I think he does a really good job with his food and, and uh, he'll have a luxury item or two and stay pretty light. So uh, shout out to him for one, being one of the best uh, packers for the water I've seen in the other trips. So he, he said his was 40 plus pounds, I'm a little heavier than that. But it is a heck of a lot lighter than some of those videos I've watched on BWCA when they start taking crates out and stuff. So who knows? Yeah. Uh, hopefully we hit a good middle road. I know once I get on land and uh, deal with the portaging and the canoe and all that, I know I'm good at camp. I'm more than I ever have. So the uh, looking forward to it. We'll see what we think. I, I wanted to do this to, so that I could come back and refer to it for next year. See what I should have had or what I shouldn't have. I did forget about this back here. But it won't make sense until I show you the other thing that popped into the video when I took a break. Don't, these will be on my body so they don't quite count. You're using Kevlar canoes and uh, you know, they're, they're, you're renting them but I would treat that canoe like it was mine too. So you have to get in it, with a Kevlar canoe, you can't run it up on the bank like you can uh, the uh, sit on tops and stuff we use on some of our river trips or even my plastic sea kayaks. I got to treat it more like the Kevlar sea kayaks that we've used. So I've done some research. I don't know, this is, I probably spent more time researching this than anything, but I went with a pair of what they got Choda Hippies and they have waterproof neoprene, which is important. It was actually waterproof. Uh, and you can start out about your knees or go all the way up to your hips and uh, so I can get in and out of the canoe. They also kind of serve as rain pant pants, I'll probably keep some heat in too. Uh, so we'll see. This could be the greatest thing I bother or the bus. Now with this, I needed some shoes that would uh, fit these neoprene socks and everything and do the portaging. After doing some research, I ended up with these, uh, they're Bates Recondo Jungle Boots, and Jungle Boots, after doing some research, are actually a good thing. These are kind of a, uh, not your grandfather's Jungle Boots, but uh, they probably would work fine too. But these have more of, they almost look like when they collapse down, they almost look like the tennis shoes we wear. But they have a very nice sole, a lot of grip. Uh, and if you see right here, we may show them, there's drainage ports on both sides, so the water drains out on really quick. The, there's no extra material in here to uh, 
collect water, retain water. It's a quick drying Cordura canvas, and uh, I've tested them around here, wading in water and stuff like that. And they do great. Uh, you almost shake them dry; they'll still be wet for. It, it still takes them overnight or days, according to what you know what the outside weather is. But look at that tread, getting in and out of the rocks and doing the portages. I can hike in these. I've hiked in in an emergency before with this, so the portages aren't that long. But if for some reason these end up not working, that's where this bag come in. It is a little extra. It's a pair of uh, neoprene, neoprene socks and the inserts that go in here. When I was using this, I took the inserts out with the socks, but I've tried this combination and I can put, put these on and wear these boots, which are uh, oversized boots for me normally, instead of those if I need to. So it's just kind of, this kind of emergency backup. The other thing these can do is work around camp. But that's just a little extra. It may just be me uh, being overly cautious, but the first time out, hey, right there's probably half a pound I can lose next year. Uh, I think we made the right choice right here. They're head, uh, like I said, I normally don't wear a boot, but this is really a boot bottom with a tennis shoe top, canvas, you can see it doesn't, they're light, they collapse down. I think that that could be the winner of the bus, but uh, I know I'll make it through the trip with them, so we'll see. If I had done this gear on a hike, yeah, I don't know. It's probably about the same amount of gear I take on a uh, sit on top kayak trip down the river, Green River, or something here where we have luxury. So we cheat, take coolers, and we uh, grill some real food. Uh, but uh, on this trip, you know, we could have done that the first day and then you're hauling a cooler around for eight days. So it's not enough to try anything like that. I'll probably end up taking some things out for next year, but I bet I end up adding. I don't think I'm going to get much lighter than this overall for an eight day trip. Now, if I went for a short period of time, I think I could. Hey, we'll see.